Welcome to part four of my series on the LUSH-101 by the D16 Group Audio Software. In this episode, I'd like to talk about Oscillator Sync. Oscillator Sync has actually been around since the analog days. The Prophet 5 by Sequential Circuits made a lot of use of the Oscillator Sync capability. And a lot of hits were made using those sounds. There were a few more synths in the early 70s that had the Sync Oscillator capability. There was the Moog Prodigy and the Moog Saurus and the Arp Odyssey, for example. With the advent of digital technology, additive synthesis became an option. That technology allowed us to use sound sources that were more complicated than square or sawtooth waves. Here are some examples of additive synthesis waveforms. Instruments like the Kawai K5 and the Korg DW8000 had additive waveforms in the oscillator department. These waveforms had a unique different kind of tone to them. Some of the pricier systems in the early 80s would enable you to construct these waveforms with additive synthesis. A couple of examples were the Fairlight and the PPG Waveterm. In the latter half of the 80s, there was a machine made here in Canada that enabled you to deal with additive synthesis. It was pricey, but it was a real-time additive synthesis engine. It was called the Technos Axle and was invented by Pierre Guillemet. And the marvelous thing about the Technos Axle was that it could do resynthesis. This was done by a complex Fourier analysis process which derived information about the components of a sound. It then created instructions to adjust the volume, pitch, and dynamical changes in the volume and pitch of sine waves to simulate an acoustic sound. More about that later. The brain recognizes that this is a note because there's a wavelength that repeats itself. And even with a complex sampled sound where there's variations in the waveform, the brain still analyzes the periodicity and recognizes the pitch. We know this is a note as opposed to a noise type sound because the auditory analysis systems in the brain detected repeating wavelength. Here's an example of white noise, pitchless with no periodicity whatsoever. So you see no pattern whatsoever, complete randomness. Now the amazing thing about the brain is that it can determine what is noise and what is note in just a few milliseconds. Here's a wee little burst of noise. Now compare that to pitched sounds with equal periodicity or wavelength. The pattern recognition based frequency analysis system of the brain is a truly amazing phenomenon. Even with a wall of white noise and a tiny little bit of note, the brain can still sift through the noise and find the note value. Looking at that waveform, it would be hard to recognize that there's a note value in there anywhere. This ability to recognize patterns in noise is definitely based on survival instinct. As animals, we've had millions of years to evolve a fine tuned sense of detecting order and chaos. I'll talk more about additive synthesis in upcoming tutorials, but the reason I mention additive synthesis is because I'd like to talk about the way of building a complex waveform using oscillator sync, a technique that was available on the simple analog systems. When you first boot up the Lush 101, the default patch comes up with a sawtooth wave. This button here enables keyboard tracking of the filter, which means the note that you play will affect the filter cutoff point. Turning this button off will ensure that the filter cutoff point stays at full value even if we play low keys. The sync process works on either waveform, but I'm going to use the square wave because it's going to be easier to see what's going on on the scope. So here's a look at the square wave. This area here is where you deal with pitch related aspects of your synthesizer. This button is usually on because you usually want the notes that you play on the keyboard to control the pitch of your oscillators. If you disable it, no matter what key I play we get the same note. We'll come back to this in a second, but leave this button on. Now to activate sync mode you click here. At first we won't notice anything, but I'm going to raise this pitch offset fader slightly. The pitch of the note has stayed the same, but the tone has changed. When you activate the sync button, what you're doing is turning on a secret hidden oscillator. That oscillator becomes the oscillator that you hear. We'll call this new hidden oscillator the slave. The hidden oscillator will be synced to the master oscillator, and the master oscillator is still defined by the wave shape and the wave blend and the tuning that we assign here. When the keyboard tracking button is active, this fader becomes the pitch offset or the pitch adjustment of the synced oscillator. This modulation control is now assigned to the slave oscillator or the synced oscillator. Ordinarily, we'd hear a vibrato effect here, but with the oscillator in sync, we hear it as a tonal wobble. 
Ordinarily, a setup like this would mean that the envelope generator is going to modulate the pitch of our oscillator. But when we add the sync function, now we get this beautiful cascading harmonic effect. You're probably still scratching your head wondering what I was going on about about that survival instinct and pattern recognition thing earlier. Well, here's how it relates to the synced oscillators. First, we'll look at the unsynced oscillator on the scope. Now let's turn on sync. In the original waveform, we could consider a period of oscillation to be this. And that pattern would just continue. Now let's look at the synced pattern. So what's happening is that the master oscillator is resetting the cycle of the synced oscillator. What we're seeing here is the synced oscillator beginning. You see that the cycle tries to continue and then becomes reset part way through. The beginning of each cycle of the waveform of the master oscillator resets the cycle start of the slave oscillator. You now see the higher frequency of the synced oscillator, except that periodically the slave cycle is restarted by the onset of the cycle of the master oscillator. Even though there's higher frequency content, we're still perceiving the fundamental as that defined by the longer wavelength frequency of the master oscillator. Making changes in the pitch of the slave oscillator results in a tonal change and not a fundamental pitch change. And we can do the same with the sawtooth wave. Even without any pitch modulation settings, LFO1 is pre-assigned to control vibrato, the vibrato range being controlled with this fader here. I've also used MIDI Learn to attach my mod wheel to the offset fader. Here I've assigned an LFO to modulate the pitch of the slave oscillator. I've set the LFO to random, and I've added a few voices in voice stacking and detuned them slightly and spaced them out a bit in the stereo image. And this fader lets you blend in a little bit of the master oscillator's tone, because right now we're just hearing the synced oscillator. And as we move this fader to the top, we end up having a 50-50 mixture of the slave and the master oscillators. You may remember way earlier that I mentioned that this button enables the keyboard to control the pitch of your audio oscillator. Switching this off disables the keyboard control of the pitch of the synced oscillator, so it just sits at a stationary pitch unless you choose to control its pitch with this knob. This mode disables this offset fader, so the offset is actually done with this control. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don Garbutt signing off.